What is up everyone and welcome back to the channel. I hope you are all doing well. Before we get into the video, I have a couple new pickups I wanted to run through quickly, so let's go. The first item up is a pair of shorts from Rick Owens. This is a pair of Stefan shorts from SS24 in the waxed version. These shorts are made of a 91% cotton, 6% elastane, 3% rubber stretch denim fabric and feature a wax coating all throughout. The shorts themselves feature slack well pockets with silver rivets, a zipper fly, raw hems, and paneled in hanging open pockets. They feature hammer loops on each side and back patch pockets. These shorts are a bit shorter and I went for a size 34 to try and get a little bit of increased length, but nonetheless, all the material, the finishing, and the construction is just beautiful and these are an excellent pair of shorts. The next item up is a hoodie from Balenciaga that I got in a trade with Victor. It is a Ramstein hoodie and to my interpretation it's basically just a simulation of a vintage hoodie it features a kind of speed hunters ass graphic on the front it's made of an 100% cotton fleece and it's not the nicest fabric I will say that Balenciaga does one of the best jobs at simulating a vintage hoodie the wash on it is really even and a nice color the distressings are somewhat clean and not too obnoxious and ultimately it does fit really nicely and creates a good shape the next item up is a pair of BBS Solomon speed cross fives in the green and blue colorway. This is a colorway that I only saw photos of for the longest time, and I believe it came out in 2020. This shoe definitely has a slimmer silhouette with just tread on the bottom, a heel cup, Solomon zigzag on the side, and the Solomon lace up on top. Even though it is really colorful, the colors are done really tastefully. They're kind of desaturated, they blend together nicely, and the dye gives them some satisfying highs and lows. The next item up is a pair of shorts that I showed in the last video. These are the Utility Short version twos, and they're actually on the website now. They are an improved iteration of the Utility Shorts featuring a 74% polyamide, 26% cotton fabric that has a really nice, rich, deep black color, smooth, satisfying hand feel and texture. They feature an updated pocket layout, an improved, slightly longer fit, and they are completely finished on the inside. The next item up is another hoodie from Balenciaga. I also got this in a trade with Victor. It is the Triple XL layered hoodie from the their autumn winter 22 show. The hoodie is made of an 100% cotton terry fabric. The hoodie itself features raglan shoulders, a V notch on the neck with a full t-shirt paneled in on the inside. The t-shirt is completely constructed. It has sleeves and hangs about seven inches below the hem of the hoodie. The final item up is a jacket I made. This is a prototype sample and it is a front zip anorak jacket. It is made of a coated cotton rib stop fabric. The jacket itself features angled zip pockets on the front and and some other details that are subject to change. It is just a prototype and it's definitely in the vein of the direction I want to take the future products in. Those have been all of my new pickups. Let's get into the video. to the store, 55 Canal Street. How does it feel to own a store and to be able to walk there? It feels uh, scary. We are here at uh, Lagaz yeah, yeah, yeah. slash Fugazi. I'm gonna order a uh, off-menu item. I'm gonna get the uh, ground pork latte. Come on in. Kuganaman, donuts. This is like a lemon lemon glaze, you know? The menu. This is the, uh, what makes it all happen. Fugazi store in New York. This is a chair from Facebook Marketplace. Persian rug from Facebook Marketplace. We have shoes, clothes, we have blankets. Bag from China. When it got here, it got here in like a massive box. Just one big box. Custom hangers. Basically, I was looking around New York 
for like four months every day I would just walk around. Nothing was really exactly how I wanted and then when this one came up I like moved on it right away. What's your Fugazi order? Hey, what's up? This is Elsewhere Vintage. You are visiting my studio, my bunker, hideout. These are bootlegs, so don't put my name on this. These are some crazy horror film tees. If you know Dario Argento. This shit's not cool, really, but it's all huge jackets from like World War One. It's definitely not my specialty. My specialty is sweatshirts, if you didn't know. 1950s, 60s, faded sweatshirts. Probably straight off the barn on these. I'm always looking for different, unique, inspiring fades or different kind of distresses. This one has some interesting uh, original repairs. A lot of stuff here, some classic 50s, 60s, Snoopy, Peanuts related. Another one that's just perfectly faded. This is kind of a wild uh, World War II Navy one where they kind of stenciled all the ships in different locations they were at. This is like a 70s tree worker. If you were climbing trees, this would have been kind of your daily uniform. It's really thick and it's uh, double sided. And these are more like double layer ones. These ones are from the 50s. This is probably more someone hunting. This is from the 70s. It's got a little stencil down there. This could have been someone on a track team champion. One of my favorite colors, just this sherbet kind of peach. And if you could see there, that's the original color it was. This is an afterhood, 1940s. It's got two Vs. So a double V it has a floating pocket, kind of shows you the attention to detail they had back then. Another champion reverse weave, probably from the 60s. Again, more athletic, probably cross country. collect um, animal rights tees, really PETA shirts. <laughs> yeah, this is one of the most classic, one of my favorites. The vivis section is scientific fraud. After a decade or more into this, I finally started making my own. And these are just some kind of demos, as I call them, kind of based on a 1940s after hood. The after hood is because it's put on afterwards. It's got a thermal lining, experimenting with different colors and fades. And I kind of, I like to call it like a smile pocket. Yeah, there's only one way to access this. Yeah. Thurston Moore of Sonic Youths, one of his record labels called a static piece, t-shirt number one. We're in Midtown, Midtown Manhattan. New little studio spot, sick boy showroom. Maybe you run a dick pill office, you know? How does it feel to be a homeowner? Feels pretty good. Sure. Off of Archive. Off of Second Street, off of Archive, off of running a dick pill. Well, I probably would've been an architect if I didn't do this, so maybe I shouldn't have done all this. <laughs> Canada Goose. We've got the backpack straps. We've got from the hood. Got unzip it, make it long. I wanted this thing for so long, honestly. Mm -hmm. 
Walter Van Beerenknock East Pack backpacks with the monster face. Limited to 2000. And a lot of them have like your pink tags. Some air cutters, OG Raf, Adidas. Pretty good one. Good layers. Junior Carhartt, Duble. American Apparel hoodie from 2007. Super vintage. Super heavy. Uh, it's a kickball jersey. Sponsored by Baskin Robbins. Sport Tech XL. 100% poly, of course. I'd say it has a spongy hand, <coughs> spongy hand feel. Pretty lustrous. Not that shiny. Fully overlocked. Just like Carol. I kind of paid a lot for it, but I think it was worth it. Never getting rid of that one. My actual best piece. I bought on eBay. That bands that I bought because you can wear them as slippers. So much Rick Trow. I got this vintage tee. I'll wear this one on days where I don't wear the Balls Deep jersey. Starting off with this Paul blazer, 100% wool, cotton lining, got the double back vent, got the matching trousers, the belted pair. Yeah, these are super baggy, super wide. Chore coat, probably from around the 40s, maybe a little earlier. This is like a shirt made out of material that's pretty similar to his lining. I think it's just like muslin, 100% cotton. It's got like good cloth covered buttons. Pretty simple piece, just like good to style with all the suits and stuff. Textures. It's immaculate. Immaculate texture. Immaculate. Tons of buttons too. It's his pocket blazer. I think it's 50 linen, 50 wool, like herringbone with like these occasional random green yarns running through. This drapes super nice. Then we got this super coarse blazer right here. It's 50 linen, 50 wool, but it's like a really heavy twill. Yeah, that, that shape is nice. Got the wool hat with the dung mold lining. <laughs> Gotta have a silly hat. Got these braced shorts as well. Just 100% wool, herringbone, tiny sweater. It's a cotton, uh, cotton knit. I like when he mixes the knits with the wovens. And it's got the good cloth buttons as well. I wear these like every day for like a year straight, and they've just been like wearing out. It's a super nice material. It's like a 50 linen, 50 wool herringbone. It just like feels like the most authentic to me. It's like. It's just what I'm naturally interested in. It just feels good to wear. It's comfortable. 
I found it on eBay. It's this old painting it's on wood. It's this dude like trying to. I, th I assume he's like reaching for his bag and he's like getting hit over the head or something. He <laughs> had the <to> cop. Obviously. <laughs> Needed it. Yeah. We're, we're teleporting back. I'm in middle school. My notebook, we draw on, you know, the Volcom logo, Quicksilver. I decided I was gonna try to make my own brand called Paradox. Basically, I would just go to a local, like, screen printing store and I would get them to make, like, one DTG t shirt with, like, a logo on it. And then I would, like, take pictures of it. Maybe 2014, I started making these five panel hats. I would take those to the skate park and, like, every time I would bring the duffel bag, it would just sell out on the first day. Paradox, I had to stop making it because I didn't have the trade trademark for the name and like this company was coming after me and I was also making these like little fake like iron on box logos. My Instagram was called Fugazi Fred. My dad's like oh why don't you call it Fugazi. Fugazi was very still like extremely small very made to order situation and, and it was sporadic too because it, it wasn't a real business. I was also like reselling a lot of clothes during that time like Revenges, Supreme, Be Alone. I would be in like buying and selling Supreme New York on Facebook and be like hey what do you guys think of my brand? And people were just like shitting on it. I was going to math class. I think I saw Fernando in the class or he walked in. He was wearing like a vintage shirt, the, the trucker hat with the diamonds on it, glasses, the, the red shorts. So I like said, what's up to Fernando? And I like got his number or whatever. And he would just text me like every Wednesday night being like, yo, like what's on this quiz tomorrow? And then <laughs> the next morning, <laughs> he just wouldn't show up. He would, he would show up like one out of every five times. And then he hit me up in the summer of freshman year and be like, hey, I'm looking for an intern for Silver League. And at the time, Jacob and Fernando were living together. And I made this one shirt that was said North Korea skate team. Jacob thought it was hilarious. He's like, yo, we can help you with your brand. So they helped me design this like neon green hoodie with a like a speed logo on it, like a, a Supreme Motion logo. We were teasing the hoodie for like six months straight before we dropped it. The first time it dropped, we were like, oh shit, like it was actually pretty hype. I was doing NKST for a little bit. Between like reselling and uh, making NKST, I had like a bit of money to work with and I also had like a bit more production know-how. So I was like, how can I make like an impact with Fugazi? I decided that I, I was gonna try to make a shoe. I never actually planned to sell it. I just wanted to make it and post it because I kind of designed it with like having a viral appeal in mind. I posted it, kind of went like viral. I was like, shit, do I do I actually drop it now? What do I do? We're like, okay, I'm, I'm just gonna release a pre-order of like a specific quantity. Pretty much within like 10 seconds, all the shoes were gone. But I also at the time I was like making the first Fugazi cut and sew collection. I'm like, okay, I, I have a brand here. And then from there, I just slowly started building up, doing bigger collections. It's just slowly grown like over the years. Fernando and I did a collab together. Fernando and I got our first office together in 2020. We did our first pop-up on La Brea. I wanted to take it more seriously beyond pop-ups. We opened the Fugazi Contemporary Store. I had the great idea of <laughs> trying to do a runway show. Our plan was we do a runway show and then right after we open a New York Contemporary Store for three months. We kind of at some point decided it's impossible to find a short-term lease that we like. So we're like, okay, like let's trust our gut and let's sign a real lease. Immediately after we did the show, it it was Christmas and then like January 1st we just got to work on on building the store once the store opened it was like okay back to work I can summarize it 2019 2020 was about like making a name for the brand 2021 2022 was about establishing it as more than just like a blip in time 2023 was okay let's try new things let's experiment and then 2024 is feels like a lot of full circle moments where it's like this is a real thing I have like a store I have a team. This feels like I'm sort of entering a new phase where it's like more real, but it's also way more scary because there's like real consequences to like shit not panning out. Like Jacob's videos have pretty much captured like all of the Fugazi era. I think that's like the power of YouTube and video is like, you're just kind of recording. You don't know what, what it means. I don't know, we might look back at this in 10 years and be like, damn, that was, that was a good time. But yeah, uh, jacob.com is where you can find my brand. Holy fuck. Damn. Bro, look at this shit. Bro, I stole for peanuts.
Bro, this went up 4,000%. 417K is huge. This is the hugest coin right now. All right, now I'm in the green. Strawberry shortcake. 